G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Well, Bitcoin, still really struggling to break out of that kind of $11,300 to $11,800 range. We've been trading in here for the best part of three weeks. Been times where it's been a little bit below, there's been times where it's been above, but we're still in there. And as we can see, Bitcoin, it's making another move right now, you know, pushing up towards that $11,800 range, but it's really kind of the higher end of the $11,800, let's say roughly $11,900. We've got to try and push out of that. I'm unsure whether it's going to do it, to be honest. I'm not sure. We've been here for such a while, and if we sort of scroll out a little bit, how long were we in this? This is the daily candles, so we're in this range for quite some time. So what was that, around about May? all the way through to July. So May, June, and even July. So yeah, I, I think we're in for something similar to this, to be honest. I think we're gonna trade sideways for a while. I think this is gonna be a great time to stock up on our alts. You know, there is a possibility we sort of pull back here, but it's hard to know, you know. The volume is obviously down at the moment, and this is, you know, traditionally uh, a hard place for us to kind of break through, uh, particularly this $12,500 level. Uh, I think it might take us a while to kind of get through this. So, you know, we'll have to wait and see again. You know, uh, I've been proven wrong many times when I thought it was going to go down further and it didn't, but I didn't think we were going to break out either. So, yeah, we'll have to wait and see. But my, my gut feeling at the moment, <laughs> and I know I say that a lot, but anyway, that's what I've got to go by, is we might see... A similar pattern to this I think that we're gonna be you know some choppy action we're gonna trade sideways for a while uh, and then obviously Bitcoin's gonna make its move but who knows you know today's Monday it's a brand new day maybe all of a sudden you know some money comes in and we start to push a little bit higher but I, I, I yeah I suspect we're gonna be trading in here for a while and it may be something fairly similar it may not be until you know September ish October before we break out who knows we'll just have to wait and see that's the the mystery of Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies is you know they are so highly volatile and liquid that they can just jump up and down at any time and, and it's really hard to pick it you know if it was easy to pick there'd be you know people that just be able to completely control the market and manipulate it and while you know we have whales and things that can manipulate the market a little bit no one can read these markets you know uh, like it's basically a complete science you know it's all to do with human emotion human psychology and things like that and again we've got to remember anyone who's bought bitcoin down here at about three thousand as soon as it gets to sort of twelve thousand you know they've triple quadrupled their money they're probably going to be looking to take some profits hence why when these got pretty close we had an immediate sell-off now, a different story for people, you know, who bought back here, but, you know, then there's leverage traders. If someone was lucky enough to get in at leverage here and watched all this, when it gets there, they're probably going to be looking to take some money if that's not what this was, maybe some leverage trading right there. You know, really, really hard to know. But obviously, it pumped up pretty hard and then it sold off just as hard. So definitely people, you know, trying to get back some of their profits and things like that. So, yeah, hard to know. Uh, we can go over to the market cap and it's growing. See, there we're back in the $380 billion mark again. Now, the highest uh, I've seen it, I think, was $388 billion, uh, not too long ago, a week or two ago. So it'll be interesting to see if we can push over that because if the market cap goes up, then you can guarantee Bitcoin's going to go up because that's where most of the money goes. It goes into Bitcoin. But obviously altcoins are starting to uh, really pump we had ethereum that went down below 400 today uh, and it's made its way back up so good to see we didn't stay below 400 for too long we can have a look over the last 24 hours there's been a couple of all right gains there swipe aragon Psycoin, waves nem so some yeah uh coins that i haven't heard of for a while particularly Psycoin, haven't heard much of that or nem uh in recent times not that i haven't heard anything from them basic attention token so well done so a couple of gains but nothing sort of too massive and no real massive drops that we can see at the moment anyway there but i mean we can tap on that again and yeah fairly minor losses there you go single digit kind of losses nothing too major but i wanted to take us over and have a look at this so we got an article here on the daily hodl and it says former imf chief economist economist sorry says Bitcoin is similar to gold and predicts digital assets will transform the financial system. So now this is a former IMF chief. 
uh, you know, the IMF, they've been very careful about uh, what they've said about cryptocurrencies uh, in the past. And they definitely are changing their stance. And I've got another thing that I'll show you very shortly. But ahead of uh, the IMF wouldn't come out and say something so bold in the past. Now, again, it is a former IMF chief, so that's why he can uh, say this stuff now. He's no longer with the IMF. You know, they wouldn't be able to, you know, go and say things like that uh, in the past and probably still can't really say things like that right now. You know, cryptocurrencies are still fairly risky and things like that. But it is interesting that he's come out and said this. Again, he's a former chief. He's not, you know, the chief and he's not with the IMF anymore. But they obviously know a fair bit about monetary policies and monetary systems and things like that. And he's saying he believes uh, Bitcoin will be like gold uh, and other precious metals and things like that. Uh, and that they will transform the financial system. So that's really, really important. You know, there's so much information out there at the moment that is, you know, basically telling you what's going to happen in the future. You just have to want to have an open mind and to be able to listen to it. I've got a ton of friends that I talk to about cryptocurrencies and they're just like, nah, it's fake, you know, it's already lost so much money and no matter what I do and what I say, they just won't listen to me. And I've even told them about some of the profits that I've made just in the last few months uh, and they still, you know, they just, they're in disbelief. They're like, nah, it's not real, it's fake, it's going to pop and it's going to go to zero and it's like, okay, I don't know what else I can do, you know. If they don't want to educate themselves and they have a closed off mind, then that's what's going to happen. They're going to be left behind. If you are currently in the crypto uh, space right now, you're ahead of the game. You're part of like maybe 1%, 2% of the world population that are in cryptocurrencies. And what they can't see is the IMF basically giving hints that cryptocurrencies are going to be the future. Now, this is a former IMF chief economist who said this. Let's go over here to Twitter. This is the actual IMF. They have put out a video about cryptocurrencies. Now, I'm not going to play the whole thing, obviously copyright and all the rest of it, but they basically go on to say that cryptocurrencies are going to be part of the future uh, and moving forwards. They do talk about it being risky and that, you know, if you don't understand how to use wallets and things like that, you know, you can lose all your money. But they do also follow up with that saying that, you know, as technology grows and those things sort of become eliminated and there's no longer the chances of you simply, you know, losing all your money because you forgot a password and that, the cryptocurrencies are the way of the future. It's happening, it's here, and it's going to be the way of the future. And there's little pieces of information and gold out there like this. But if you aren't looking for it and you're just closing your mind off to it, then you're never going to see it and you won't be able to get ahead of the trend. You are simply going to be behind, you're going to be a sheep and you're going to follow everyone in later when everybody's doing it and when it's, you know, all the major gains have already been made. So I found this really, 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 really interesting because uh, again, the IMF, they haven't had too much to say about cryptocurrencies in the past. They have talked about uh, digital assets and that uh, it's something that they were looking into uh, but never, you know, basically brought out an ad saying that, you know, these things are really going to help the uh, financial sector move forward in the future and things like that. So really, really great news. And, you know, there are those conspiracy theories and mainly from the XRP army. And look, I'm part of the XRP army a little bit that they believe that the IMF may uh, take over Ripple because they have, you know, 50 percent of Ripple is kind of locked up. And there's conspiracy theories that the IMF might, you know, take that last 50% of all the XRP uh, and then make XRP a sort of world currency. Now, I don't know if that's true. And to be honest, I don't believe it's true. But I mean, it could be. Who knows? Maybe there's people out there that know more than me. But it is an interesting theory that, you know, they might adopt Ripple because it's a cross-border payments and things like that. And no, you know, one country owns it. So... You know, that's a, a theory that you can uh, go and have a look if you want. Uh, put it into YouTube, you know, IMF uh, taking over Ripple and all the rest of it. And I'm sure you'll find a couple of interesting stories there. You know, take it with a pinch of salt, grain of salt, as they say. You know, maybe it's real, probably not real, but something to look at. So, yep, 
Bitcoin, we can go back. Still really, really struggling. And again, I suspect we're probably going to travel sideways for a while and we're going to repeat this. So it might be, uh, you know, we've already been up to about sort of three weeks that we've been trading uh, in this range. We're at about 24 uh, days right now. You know, you could, if you wanted to include, you know, these couple over here, then you can chuck on another four. So it's almost a month that we've been trading within this range roughly. Again, there's been times where we've dropped down uh, and poked above. But generally, 3,900, let's say, to uh, 11, sorry, 11,900 to 11,400-ish, 11, 11,300-ish, 11, uh, it's in that range. And we'll have to wait and see whether we break out. But the good news is, sorry, we'll go back here. It's looking green at the moment. Monday's come around, money's starting to come back in, and we can see while it's been red over the last uh, seven days, yeah, there's Monday starting to spike up. There's Monday starting to spike up. There's Monday starting to spike up a little bit. So we'll have to wait and see how this week pans out. But, you know, if that's the way that we're starting, because it hasn't just immediately dumped, look out. Maybe we are going to break outside of here and finally have a real test of that $12,500 level. But again, whether we break through the 12,500 or come up and, you know, kind of bounce off it and find some support in this higher range of 12,000, we'll have to wait and see. Anyway, that's it from me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Hopefully you're still on that game train. And I'll see you next time.